Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this Cinema 4D quick tip, I want to talk about baking MoGraph animations down to objects. Now, I've got a scene set up here. Um, it's just a cleaner object. It's got a rigid body tag on it, and uh, the floor has got a collider tag on it. So when I hit play, I get something like this. Now, I'm sure you've all come across a method to bake this kind of animation down to objects. So let's uh, just quickly go through that. If I select my cloner and hit C to make uh, my cloner editable, it basically creates a group with all the clones in it. And because this rigid body tag is still on and I've got uh, apply tag to children and uh, individual elements on, the simulation should be exactly the same. And if I want to bake that down to keyframes, all I have to do is select my cloner, go to window, my dope sheet, which is the timeline. I can grab my cloner object and drag that in. And now I can just go to functions, bake objects. Um, I don't want to create a copy of it, but that should be fine. And if I press OK, it will bake all this stuff. And now when I open up my cloner and select a load of my cubes, you'll see that there's animation tracks associated with those cubes. And I can now take off this rigid body tag and hit play and they'll still all be animated. So that's how you'd bake that down that type of animation. But there is a problem associated with this kind of thing. So let's close this project and look at this scene. Now this is slightly different. In this scene I've got a camera, some lights, uh, I've got a cloner and this cloner is being cloned onto an object and that object is a spline. And if I hit play you'll get a better idea of what's going on. So these cloned objects are revolving around this spl uh, spline and the way that I'm doing that is if you go into cl the cloner object you can see there's this rate um, value here and if I increase that you can see that I can change the direction of it and if I go the other way which is what I was doing it goes faster the other way um, so let's put that back to what it was a uh, minus nine percent so that's how this animation's happening and you'll notice that they're also growing in size as well and that's because of this random effector I've got here if I um, unhide that you'll see that it's a random effector with a box fall off and what it's affecting is the scale now, with this kind of thing, let's rehide that again so our viewport looks a bit nicer. Now the problem we've got here is if I try and do what I did in the previous scene, so I grab the cloner, I make it editable, um, now when I hit play, yeah sure, this rigid body tag is still working. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why these aren't falling down to the ground in the force tab of the dynamics tab I've got follow position turned up to 10 okay with that out of the way now I've made this kind of editable we've got some problems because even though this rigid body tag is still working and that's why they're kind of floating here and this box here is kind of revolving um, I've lost my animation and that's because the rate slider that we had in the cloner object is no longer available because this is no longer a cloner and our random effector um, that was associated with our clone is no longer associated with anything. So if I grab my cloner object and actually move it, you can see that, you know, nothing's been affected as it goes through that uh, random um, field. But you will notice that these objects here that were being affected by the random field when I made the cloner editable are now stuck at this size. So even if I move them up, well I can't do that, but yeah, so the, now that size has kind of been baked into them. So how would I go about baking this kind of thing down to keyframes? Well, let's uh, back up so we get our cloner back. There we go. And rewind to the start. There we go, we've got a cloner back and our animation. The way we'd go about baking this kind of thing down to objects, um, I've seen people do it via Expresso, bit of an elaborate setup, but there's a much, much easier way to do this. 
So what I'm going to do is select my cloner, go to File, Export, FBX. I'm going to make sure selection only is checked on, so it'll only export this cloner object. Uh, we want our tracks turned on, obviously. Um, everything else is fine, uh, materials, normals, all that, that's great. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to save it in this folder here. Saves it out. And now what I'm going to do is go to File, Merge Objects, and bring our FBX back in, which is this one. Uh, all of that should be fine. I'm just going to hit OK. And now we get this. So I'm going to hide our cloner. And you'll notice that this object is now all objects, and our objects have all got animation tracks on them. You're probably looking at the materials and wondering what's going on there. And it's because if we open this up, um, the color's been retained. But if we go to reflectance, it's sort of um, got these two different uh, reflection types, specular and reflection. Um, and it's because it's got no Fresnel. So I think if I turned that on, I'd get a, a yellow back. But an easier way to do this is actually just to go to our materials that existed before, hold Alt and drag them over the um, materials that are imported and they will overwrite the tags that were on those objects. So let's just do that for each one. And now we're in a situation where if I hit play, everything's still animated but it's been baked down to objects. So now we've just got this cloner object and we've got all these objects within it that all have animation tracks. And as you can see, everything's working as it should be. Uh, the dynamics have been baked in, which is great. And the random effector resizing has been baked into those objects as well. So everything's working as it should do. Okay, guys, I hope that helped. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. For my viewers on YouTube, please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can check out content at digitalmeet.uk where you can filter my tutorials by category and vote in the poll for upcoming tutorials. You can also follow me on social media, links in the description and the footer of my website. If you'd like to help support Digital Meet, this can be done via Patreon or the support page on the website. But if you want to help Digital Meet keep going and bag yourself some extra in-depth tutorial content, the Prime membership is available for purchase in the store. This will grant you access to the Prime membership area of the website. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.